that is. As you turn your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 1, I was talking to Barney this afternoon and this morning, and uh, just uh, expressing some things, um, uh, again, uh, about life and uh, movements and uh, different things. I, I think about, um, I guess it's probably been maybe... I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, there was this real move for apologetics. Um, you know, I'm not sure how long ago it was. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with apologetics, you know. And uh, really, apologetics is just being able to tell people what you believe and answer questions that they have. But at the end of the day, that's, you know, that movement's kind of died out some. But did it do us any good? Did it really help us when it comes to what God says that really uh, life is all about? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, there's so many movements, there's so many causes. I think the devil gets us caught up in things. Um, listened to a great, great podcast yesterday. Went to eat with my buddy Eddie in Fayetteville and was able to listen to some things uh, there. And, and this guy was saying there's a difference, there's a, there's a difference between doing something good and doing something righteous. <laughs> and that's just so true. Uh, doing something good, anybody can do something, you know, understand what I'm saying? I know uh, there's none good, no, not one. But we're just talking about good deeds, outwardly, things like that, um, and have the wrong motive. You know, but only a child of God, uh, somebody born again, saved by the grace of God, can do a righteous deed, and it'd be good also, um, because it has not only the right method, but it has the right motive. Uh, and so many times our motives are not what they ought to be. And we really, when I talk to him about that, I think we need a movement to knowing God. Wouldn't that be a great movement? Do you think if, if just these people right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 people... If you think, well, that's, that's ironic, isn't it? Twelve people. Uh, do you think that, that God, uh, if we just here decided tonight that, you know, I'm going to go on a journey. Not, I'm not going to quit doing things. I'm not going to stop uh, doing this or that. But I'm just going to go on a journey to get to know God better, who he is. You think that would change our church? Yeah, I believe we'd have a, uh, our church would be different. I guarantee it would. And, um, but we're so into causes and other things, and really it takes time to spend with God. Your time, your time, you know, that you don't have, but yet we do have time. And I have time, you know. I had a wonderful, like I said, I could do this more than I do it. But there's no doubt about it. A whole lot more. My day today was spent with God, more so than I have in a long time. And it was so refreshing, but also so convicting of where I'm at spiritually, in my own heart, my own life. The bad part about, and when I say bad part, understand what I'm saying, you can get to know God and, and God will be working, and then you can take one step and look in the other direction. You start heading that way, man, next thing you know. It's kind of like driving down the road. They say, never look into the lights of a car uh, because you're going to go that way. It's the way it is. And Bunyan describes it as bypath meadow, <laughs> you know. And there's so many bypath meadows out there that we get on rather than just keep straight on heading towards the celestial city. And so I mentioned to you last week, hopefully those of you that were here, I'm going to ask you, really the truth of the matter, this, this passage of Scripture, it, it deals with a couple things. But the main gist of the passage of Scripture, what would you say it is? I mentioned to you it's a three-word phrase, and sometimes it's a little longer than three words. But it's just, this is what, okay, this is what life's supposed to be about. Okay, been a week. <laughs> Knowledge of Him. Knowledge of him, right? I said that in the beginning of this, three times he says, knowledge of him. We're going to look at one of Paul's prayers, folks, in Colossians 
You can look at it in Ephesians. You can look where Paul prayed. His prayer was about knowledge of him. Amen? And then what's the other one word phrase that, that the apostle Peter says again, and, and this is important to him because he's writing through the inspiration of the Spirit. And by the way, at the end of the chapter, uh, this chapter, he tells us that this is, and men didn't write the Bible, but they were born along by the Spirit of God. Amen. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Amen. We got the 66 books of the Bible. Amen. And what was that word that Peter used three times? And I'm trying to get you to do it right now. Nope. I'm trying to get you to do it right now. You're trying to blank. Remember. <laughs> Remembrance. Okay. And so the apostle Peter, he's saying to them, I, I want to keep reminding you. I want you to be in remembrance of what I've said. And, and that's why I'm repeating it today. I understand, folks. Listen, I have the opportunity of going back to the message and all those. So obviously I'm going to re remember it more so than you. So I'm not, but we do need to think about these scriptures and what it's all about. And this passage of scripture is all about knowledge of him. And so when we get to this, add to, add to, add to, what are we adding to? We're adding to our knowledge of him. And that's, what's going to change our lives. Amen. Or it should. And so the passage of scripture, we talked about it at the beginning that um, he tells us here that God, uh, again, uh, that, that he's writing to those people that have like precious faith. Amen. Do you re and we talked about that last week. Do you realize and understand that that belief is precious? Amen. To believe something. Do you realize, folks, most people don't believe the truth. They believe lies. But yet you and I have precious faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he is precious. What he has done is precious. Amen. And you and I have precious belief. Amen. Like precious faith. Just to believe is a, is a miracle of God. Folks, listen, do you realize most people do not believe God? Believe what he says. And, and they talk about this as being just a, hey, y'all want to follow just an old book. <laughs> this is not just an old book, amen. This is the word of God, amen. Mm -hmm. And so he says that's who he's writing to, through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you. So this is a this is a book of multiplication in addition. <laughs> Amen. And so we're, we're, he, he is saying that I, I desire for grace and peace to be multiplied uh, to you. And here he is, here's how it goes. Through the knowledge of God. When you begin to understand and I begin to understand who God is, guess what happens? We understand how much grace and peace God gives us throughout our lives. Amen. And that he is, his grace is infinite, folks. Praise God for that. You can take every sin of every man in here, outside of here. You can have every last one of us could be as worse as Judas, our sin. And yet God's grace has got it covered. Amen. Praise God for that. Where sin abounded, grace did he has to say this because much more abounded, praise God, amen. You can write all the sins of all the people of all the world that's ever lived forever. And the grace of God goes beyond that, praise God, amen. It's infinite. Why? Because God is infinite. Everything that God is, is infinite, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he says... Through the knowledge of God and of our Jesus our Lord, he said, and then he said that according to his divine power, hath he given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Again, through what? The knowledge of him. You see, it, it's about Christ, it's about God. It's he's the, the living representation of God, and he is God. Praise God. 
he hath, and, and, and through this knowledge of God, he, he hath called us uh, to glory and virtue. God's called us to this, to glory and virtue. And then he says here in verse 4, he said, whereby are, are given unto us exceeding. Okay, so here, here's another word to add. Not, they're not just great, and they're not just precious. They're exceedingly great, and they're exceedingly precious promises. That what? By these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And so we talked about all of that last week, how, how God has, has given us the divine, the divine nature. He's, he's made us partakers of, uh, with the Holy Spirit, and he's given us everything that we need to live a life of glory and virtue and, and uh, to, to live a godly life and really know what life is, amen? And so he says, as we have all of those things, and he says, beside this, and that's where we were ended up last week. He says, giving all diligence. That word is a great word. It's a word that talks about. Now, would you say today that we're in a busy society? Right? Yes. A busy society. We are. I mean, we can't even keep up with what we got to do. <laughs> it's a constant, Right? Over and over again, just more and more and more busyness. That's really what this word has the idea of, diligence. It's, it's being busy, okay? But the question is, what are we going to be busy in, right? And really the truth of the matter is, we should be spending our time busy in getting to know God and who God is, his knowledge. Now, remember I mentioned to you this. I can't remember when I mentioned to you, okay? <laughs> See, my memory is bad too. But I, I know that I mentioned this to you. It, it's not just reading your Bible in the morning. It's, it's meditating upon the word of God and, and, and soaking it in and allowing God's word to go with you wherever you go. Amen? You, you cannot have knowledge of him if you have not, no knowledge of the Bible. Right? Amen? So, so you need to be in the Bible. And like I like to say, let the Bible be in you. Amen? Let it soak in. Paul, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> James says it like this. He says, the engrafted word. Let, let it take hold of your life. I've said this to you about John Bunyan, and I wish it could be said about me and you. Cut John Bunyan anywhere on his body, and he'd bleed the word of God. That's an amazing statement, isn't it? Wouldn't that be great if, if, if that's the way we were? Our lives were so soaked into the word of God that the word of God would come out of us. And what's coming out of us? Christ. Who he is. And, and so here, he says, giving all diligence, put some time into this. You know, I, 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 I deal with people all the time. And, and you know, I, I, I like, well, I like, I don't love any more basketball. I enjoy it. Watching basketball, I enjoy teaching it, I enjoy being, but, but I enjoy God and, and wanting people to know God in a greater way because basketball is going to go away, but, but God's never going away, amen? And so if, if, if it can impact one life, now, folks, listen, Paul, Jesus, Peter, James, everybody that you can find in the Bible, they, they, their goal was not to influence one person. That wasn't their goal. They desired to influence everybody. But not everybody was influenced, right? They had a desire for everybody to know God. Amen? And that's what we should have. Now, you can't speak to everybody, but you should hope and desire that everybody would get it. Amen? Would understand. And so he says here, he says, giving all diligence, add to your faith. And we said last week, that's where it starts. Right? Hebrews 11, 6. I don't ever get tired of quoting that verse, right? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That was in days of praise today, I believe. That he is, that he exists, amen? And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Listen, God will. There's no doubt about it. If you and I will diligently seek him, he will do what he desires to do in our hearts and lives. 
will diligently seek him. He says here, giving all diligence. Add to your faith. So what are we adding to that? Well, the first thing that we add to it is, is virtue. Okay? Now, again, these things are, 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 are processes leading up to something which is what? Charity. Christ-like love. Okay? You're not, you're not, you're not born, when you're born again, you have the potential, amen, to have Christ-like love. But you don't have Christ-like love when you first get born again. You do have the potential for it, though. He lives within you, amen? You can respond with Christ-like love. But this is a process coming from virtue, okay? And, and really that word has the idea, again, of excellence, okay? Doing things right. Uh, one, 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 one uh, I think it's either in the Strongs or the Thayers, it, it says that, um, oh, I think it says... Uh, manliness valor you know is what this word has the idea of what, what really is a is a man you know well a, a man is a virtuous man if he's truly a what God has created him for or he should have that desire to be manly well, what is that <laughs> well it's virtuous that's what it is it's 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 purity it's it's holiness it's excellence and, and, and whether it's a man or a woman. God says here that, that we ought to give all of our diligence to, uh, 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 as we add to our faith, we add this virtue. Was there anybody more manly than Jesus? Was there anybody more virtuous than Jesus? No, no, no. No, no, he, he is the, he's the <laughs> complete, <laughs> He's always, that's who he is, amen? And that's who he's always going to be. It's never going to change. And, and, and his desire for us is to, to be like him in that way, in all that we do. Now, also this, this idea of virtue has this idea, too, of, of, of thinking rightly, thinking morally. And really, that's where it all starts. It starts in the mind. You're not going to be outwardly moral if you're not thinking right. Amen? And so it's what we put in. And there again, it goes back to the knowledge of him. Thinking about how virtuous the Lord Jesus Christ is. Listen, there's nobody like him. And he wants us to be like him. Amen? But there's only one way to be like him. Is to allow him to work in our lives and, and him to show himself to us and how we're to act in this way and, and, and by doing this in our lives. And then he says, uh, to virtue, so you're, you're adding to this excellence, to this uh, uh, character, uh, uh, knowledge. And this is so important. Boy, you, you, got, you got to take in, this is, this is, uh, this word knowledge, from what I've studied, has the idea of, of, of learning right and wrong and and, and, and what to do in certain situations and all those kind of things, but you only learn that from God in his word. That's why it's so important to be in God's word to know what God would have you to do, amen, in every situation. Situations are difficult, folks. Knowing how to respond. I, I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to tell you something, you know, in the future. Uh, just, it's a situation, you know, where you get put in and, and, and somebody says, well, don't, don't tell that or something, you know. And you're like, oh, I don't know if you should do that or not. And you, you got to go to God and, and ask God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? You know, you, you, and, and, but that only comes, again, by getting in the Word and, and allowing the Spirit of God to show you His Word and what He desires. And so you have to have this. The Word is gnosko, uh, gnosis, which means a knowledge by, by taking in. It's not Edo where it's intuitive. It's a, it's, it's a knowledge gained by learning. And so the apostle Peter here is saying, add to this virtuous person knowledge, learning how to be morally correct and, and knowing what's right and what's wrong. Folks, listen. Will God teach us if we, if we will ask him and learn? 
You know, I go back to my days teaching at Union Grove, and I've, I've said this to you before. You know, you know, I don't. I try not to. Uh, I used to now do, do a lot of debating with people. But I was teaching sixteen-year-olds, and you know, Bible class, ninth and tenth grade, and you know, you know, we got into all kinds of subjects and convictions and stuff. And you know, this girl, she she thought it was okay, you know, to wear a bikini on the beach. Okay, that, that was our discussion. And uh, I said, it's not okay. Okay, what do you say? <laughs> no, I said, it's not okay. But I said, really, it, it doesn't matter what you say, what I say. Let's throw that out the window and forget it. Okay, because it really doesn't matter what I say or what you say. If I think it's wrong, you don't think it's wrong. But what does the Bible say? Okay, and the Bible teaches what? It teaches modesty. Right? And that's not modest. And this is what I said to her. I said, just as well as I can do something, you can do something too. If you have the Holy Spirit living in you, you can gain this knowledge by getting in the Bible and getting from the mirror and saying to God, God, is this okay for me to go out in public in? And what do you think God would tell her? That participation Wednesday night. What do you think God would tell you? Do you think God would tell her it was okay to do that? According to his word? No, no, he wouldn't. He wouldn't do that, folks. Now, again, am I saying the girl not saved or saying, no, I'm just saying, listen, if people would get in the word and let the word get in them, you and I can't change them. She believes it's okay. I believe it's not okay. Is there any reason why for me to argue and fuss with this young girl about this? No, no. Listen, if you can get in the mirror and you can get in the word of God and God tells you it's okay for you to do that, can, more power to you, keep going. You're not changing people. But I believe the Bible will teach her and show her through the knowledge of scripture, uh, the principle, not the clothing that you're wearing, but the modesty principle that God says in his word, amen. And really the word virtue has that idea of modesty too. And so, again, we argue and fuss over things, and really people just need to get in the Word of God and ask God. Now, that's just one subject. There's all kinds of other ones out there. And then he says here, and to your knowledge, temperance. This is, uh, temperance is the word, same word that's used for in the um, uh, fruit of the Spirit. Uh, it's self-control. It's self-control. And, and so, really, do we live in a world that's more self-control or less? Less. People can't control themselves. We got things going on, just insane things today. Because why? And I'm talking about the Christian realm. God help us. And really this idea of temperance has, does uh, really speak more so to the sensual. Uh, but we, that, that's where we live today. We live in a sensual society. And there's really no self-control. And, uh, but the Bible says that we need to learn these things and we need to add to our, our knowledge self-control. What God says is right and wrong. We need to add to that self-control in situations. And only God can do this. Amen. And it's by knowledge of him. Listen, who showed the greatest self-control ever as far as the world's ever concerned? Who? who? Jesus did. Folks, listen, do you, we're not, we're talking, when we say this word, all power, do you realize, folks, we're talking infinite power, right? That there is no, you can't even understand the power of God. And people are spitting on him and mocking him and doing all, and the soldiers came and got all these different things. You're talking about the epitome of self-control. He could have struck every single one of the, right? They're questioning his power. They're questioning who he is. But he knew who he is. And therefore, he could have self-control because he is self-control. That's who he is. It's infinite. You see, folks, listen, this power, the Bible has already told you and me, 
that he's in us, right? We got that from the beginning, that he is in us. We have been made partakers of divine nature. He's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. So it's not that we cannot be self-controlled. It's that we will not yield to God and allow God to control our lives. God help us. That's including me. You see, when we, when we feed the, the fleshly side and, and, we, and we feed that old nature, listen, we're going to lean to that old nature. It's time for God's people to begin to add these things in their life. Then he says, into, into temperance, what a great word, a patience. Patience. Now, is there anybody that has more patience? It has the idea, again, of, of, of long-suffering than God, than the Lord Jesus Christ? Folks, listen. He is infinitely patient. This is who he is. If we need to praise his name, praise God, that he is patient with us. Amen? And he desires us to, to learn this thing of waiting and be patient Amen. It's one of the hardest things you will ever do in your life is wait and be patient on what God wants to do in your life. But again, if you have no self-control, you're not going to be patient, right? You're not going to wait. That's just the way it is. Is that true or false? If you have no self-control, do you think you're going to be patient and wait? No, it's not happening, folks. And so... He says, add this, this patience. And again, remember what I said at the beginning. This is a, a process of God coming at the beginning, taking your faith, your belief, your trust, and then adding these things. But you're, you're never going to be where you say, man, I have arrived. I am completely virtuous. <laughs> right? That's not happening. You're never going to arrive where you're going to say, man, I have all knowledge. I don't need any more knowledge. I don't need to take anything else. Right? No. You're not going to come to the place ever where you say, man, I'm in complete self-control. <laughs> Every situation I come to, I mean, man, I found out today they're charging, and they charge you too, and, and, and good thing Suzanne left out. And uh, on your insurance now, this uh, uh, North Carolina, um, it's called some kind of tax, and not tax, but it's called something that every insurance, they're tacking it on. It's like 50-some dollars on your insurance that you have to pay. And you know what it's for? It's for other people that don't have insurance. You have to pay for their insurance because they drive without insurance. That, that's the truth, folks. That's why you have to pay it. I'm like, man, that's great. And it's a, it's a North Carolina state law that they have to add that in there and they can't take it off. That's great, isn't it? That'll, that'll keep you under some self-control, won't it? <laughs> you find out. You know, I found this out. I called the lady. I said, are you serious? I already read about it, what it was, and you got to call your North Carolina uh, legislature and all that and tell them you, they need to stop making these laws like this. That's a made that'll, that'll try your patience, won't it? It will. But you know what? If the Lord Jesus, now, I'm glad that, like I told you, had a, I believe what was a face-to-face -face encounter with the Lord today. It was wonderful. And so I didn't get mad for later. I said, okay, thanks. I went to my bill pay, and I just put it in there. Got to pay it. There's no need for me to get all bent out of shape and crazy about it, right? But there's all kinds of situations in our life that call for self-control, that call for patience. And then he says, godliness, to patience, godliness. And that word godliness has the idea of, of living a, a, a pious life, a, a, just a, a godly life where everything in your life, again, is beginning to be about God. And what God thinks about your life. And then he says to godliness, brotherly kindness. Now this is uh, the word where uh, we get our word uh, uh, Philadelphia from. Brotherly kindness. Did anybody show this greater than the Lord? With his disciples? No. Not at all. He, he, and, and again, that's what he wants us. He, there, there, there's nobody. God's, again, kindness is infinite. God's kindness is infinite. And he expects our kindness to be like that. Because why? Why does he expect that? 
Why does God expect our kindness to be infinite? We're supposed to be like him. Right. He, he, he's in us. And so every situation, listen, we can be kind to one another. It's our brothers and sisters. That's what's amazing that we're, we're so cruel and unkind to. It's amazing what goes on in people's homes, in life, that we could be so mean-spirited to our fleshly brothers and sisters, obviously, and our, 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 our sons and daughters and husbands and wives and our families and all these other kind of things. That's amazing. But it's even more so amazing that we could be that with a way with our brothers and sisters in Christ. It's sad, folks. It just is. God says when you're growing in your faith that, that you, you have this brotherly kindness. Man, I like to meet people. Like Richie, the, the man you met the other day, that's a blessing. You don't meet people like that that are brothers, man. I like to talk to people that I told you about the lady when we were taking up gifts to go to Kentucky, the different things that we were taking. And she was a Christian in a church out in Cold Ridge. And, and uh, she gave donation to us, said, here's some money. She found out what we were doing. And man, it's just exciting to find a sister in Christ. Amen. The blessing, praise God. We need more of those. God wants us to be brother, brotherly. Amen. And again, boy, I wish Jared was in here tonight so he could tell us about that, where that saying came from, um, blood is thicker than water. Do you know that was a spiritual term? That came from a spiritual term. I believe Daryl was telling me, and he might have mentioned it to you guys, that, that that particular term really had the idea of Christ's blood was thicker than water. Really, that, that, that the spiritual blood was more so than the physical blood. And really, it should be that way. With our brothers and sisters, we ought to have brotherly kindness. And then he gets to the, the, the last part there uh, of God's love, charity. God's love to brotherly kindness, charity. Charity. God's love. Did you realize, folks, listen, everything about God, and although we don't understand it, and although it's, 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 it's mind-blowing, everything about God is infinite. His love is infinite. It's infinite. That's beyond comprehension. Amen. And God says that, that we have the ability to, to love like Him. That's amazing. That we can go beyond just brotherly kindness. That we can get to a place where we can really be expressing God's love and who God is. That should be the way it's about. What it's about in our lives. And so this is a, this is a process that, uh, again, that God has called us to. And all of these things, every last one of them that he says here, all deals with knowledge of him. Learning more about God. If you want to be more virtuous, learn more about God. He's infinite, infinitely virtuous. You want more knowledge? Now, folks, listen. We're not talking about book knowledge. We're talking about God knowledge. Amen. The smartest. Listen, this is what's incredible. That a theologian can actually not walk with God on a daily basis. That's incredible, folks, that he can have all that knowledge and yet really not know God in a personal way. That's incredible. You know, that's a lot of people the way they read their Bibles. They just, they just read their Bibles and they go away and they're not touched. They're not, they don't have any kind of uh, attachment to God and who God is. He doesn't speak and those kind of things. That's crazy. That's, that's not the way to live. Amen? Amen. You want, you, want, you want more, again, self-control? Then, then learn more about Jesus. Amen? Learn more about God. You want, you want more patience? You want to learn how to wait? Learn more about God. And folks, listen, there's so many things that I want to happen uh, with, my, with my children, with my family, with other people's children, with other situations, and, and, and I'm, I'm amazed. I, I, listen, I, I think, how many of you ever made a bad decision in your life? How many have made more than five? More than ten? More than probably a hundred? And so we view people, and it's so sad, the way that we view people. I'm talking about me. And when we see them and, and, and they make these decisions, you're like, oh, man, oh, man. 
man, oh man, oh man, oh man. It's just like over and over and over and over again. And, and you, you're like, man, how many did I make? God, your, your, your grace is it's infinite. You, you rescued me from myself. You can rescue anybody. Boy, wouldn't it be great to have that kind of view and heart every day <laughs> that God can? The truth of the matter is, folks, listen, that is truth. God can. <laughs> right? Amen? I, I know people make decisions, but why? We've lost, folks, listen, I'm just telling you, we've lost hope in God. Now, when I say we, I'm talking about as a, as a Christian people. We, we've done so many things on our own and, and we're mechanical and all these other kind of things and, and we haven't really gotten to know God and who God is and everything else is exciting. I, I thought about this. Folks, we should never, ever, 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 no, never, no, never, no, never be in awe of another man or woman. Never. Should never be. That should never, ever, no, never be. I've told you my life about Lynn Bias. This guy was my God. As far as I know, I haven't had, I still have people that I admire and, and I've probably been in all of, but I was in all of this man. Matter of fact, even when I see things, I probably shouldn't even look at things because then it goes back to me how in all I, I was of this guy. I was in all of Prince. Prince, you believe that? Prince. This was my God. In all of this man. That's why I'm in the world and all of a guy like that. Because I was wicked. I got a wicked heart. Still got a wicked heart. Still don't know my heart. But David said, Search me, oh God. He didn't even know his own heart. And so if David didn't know his own heart, how in the world are you and I going to know our own hearts? We're wicked. We need God. But we should never be in awe of another man or woman or our children or all these other kind of things. I'm telling you who we should be in awe of. We should be in awe of God. Who God is. God, there's nobody like God. He's infinite. All these things are infinite in Him. And if we just get to know, by the way, you're never going to know everything about God. You realize He'd cease to be God. It's going to be, oh, beyond, <laughs> again, our comprehension, still learning about God and learning things, the, the vastness of God. He is not in time or space. or There is no bounds with God. There's no bounds. It's beyond our comprehension. And so therefore, we need to get to know him, be in all of him. He says in verse 8, he said, for, for if these things be in you and abound again. See that word? It's not just surfacely, folks. For if these things be in you, what things? The things that he has said. If you're growing and learning and, and having self-control and godliness and brotherly kindness and charity and patience and and, 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 and knowledge and virtue, if these things be in you and abound, if, they're, if, they're, if you're growing in these things, they make that ye shall be neither be barren nor unfruitful in what? The knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not just knowing the Bible. Listen, folks, do you realize... This is a fact in our society, and it has been in most societies. People know about God, but they don't know God. This is, this is my prayer for you and for me. I want to know God, not a God that I've made up in my own mind or who I think he is, but who he really is, folks. I don't want to just know about God. You realize, folks, that's what every single religion is about, but Christianity. They might know about God or who they think God is, but God wants us to know him. Amen. And that's what we said last week. Paul's desire was that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death 
Hey, man, this is really... I said I was going to read that to you, and I am. We'll close with that. Turn, turn with me in your Bibles to uh, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 9 and following. Again, Paul's writing to the church at Colossae. And he, this is his prayer, folks. This is what he's praying. And this is what I'm asking you to pray this for me. And I want to pray this for you. I want to call out your name individually. Those that are here tonight and then others, I want to call out your name personally. And this, this is what I want to pray for you and I desire for you to pray for me. I beg you to do this because I, I know we'll all be better. He said, for this cause we also, since the day, now remember he said, following verse, he said, he's talking about the love of his spirit. He's talking about uh, uh, they're, they're being, them being saved and, and, and knowing who God is and those kind of things. He said, from, from th for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you about their faith again, right? He said, and, and, the, and, and desire that ye might be filled, okay? Again, that word has the idea again of being controlled. With the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Can you say that about your life? Are you increasing in the knowledge of God, who he is? Strengthened with all might, ability, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints, excuse me, in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of of his son. Now you can go on and read the rest of that past scripture and it's amazing, wonderful. But ultimately, Paul is saying, I'm praying for you. I don't cease praying for you that you might have more knowledge of God. More knowledge of God which revolutionize Faith Baptist Church. It would revolutionize your individual life. I like what Tozer says. He does not believe, and I don't believe either. A revival will ever start, but it starts in the individual. It starts in the individual. It starts with you and me. And the question is, when we go home tonight and we say, God, would you help me to begin? You may already be doing this, and so would you help me even more so to begin to add to my faith these, 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 these qualities, these things that you desire in my life. Isn't it, oh man, I've told you this before, and it is, it is bad on my part, that I knew, and, and I like this today, I, I'm, 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 and, and again, it's, I'm, I hope I'm not being on the flip side of these things, uh, but I, I used to know every single player that played for Maryland in basketball. I knew every single football player that were on the Washington Redskins. I knew all these players. Why? Why is that? Not everybody knew all the Maryland players. Not everybody knew all the Boston Redskins players. I can still, I can, right now, going through my mind, right now. Richie, did you ever like the Redskins? You knew them all too, didn't you? Yeah. That's, has that done? Substitutes too. Substitutes too, I did too, yeah. Yeah, can you, you remember who was number 72 for the Redskins, old Redskins in the 70s? Oh, uh, Manly? Uh, yeah, Manly was later. Dyron Tiber was uh, mm -hmm. before that. Mm -hmm. 55, Chris Hamburger. Mm -hmm. 37, Pat Fisher. How'd that happen? <laughs> How'd that happen? <laughs> That's right, man. I, these, these were my idols. These were, yeah, I was interested. Right? So so this was my life. Now I could not hardly even tell you who plays for the Redskins. <laughs> They're not even the Redskins, the commanders. <laughs> I can already tell you. I can't hardly tell you who plays for Maryland Terrapins. Basketball. 
I'm glad of that. But it's probably not as uh, because I got so much knowledge of the Bible either. I wish that were so. But you see, again, I'm saying to you, at the beginning of this chapter, Peter makes it clear, I think. You know, I know he does. God has given us everything. And so we have the ability to every day learn more about Jesus, if we would. And it would revolutionize our lives. It would change us from the inside out. We would have these characteristics, and we wouldn't be looking for them. You see what I'm saying? They would just be you. Oh, oh. Can I ask you a question? Did Jesus try to love? Did Jesus try to love? No, Jesus didn't try to love. Jesus just loved. That's who he is. Do you understand that? This is what God has called us to do in him. It's not that you're looking around, do I love, do I have patience, do I have self-control, do I have... You, 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 you have to do that process. But what you become, what you already are in life, this is natural to you. But it's supernatural because it's God doing it in you. And you're loving and you're kind and you're patient and you have self-control. And you look back and you say, how is this done? More knowledge of him. That's your life. Let's stand to our feet. Heavenly Father and our great God, we're thankful for who you are. God, I, I want to say to you, uh, it's hard, God, when you cannot, and I know we never will be able to totally be able to articulate these things and our desire and our heart and things that you've done and you're doing. And it's just difficult, Father, feel like you just can't express it in the way that you would like to. But yet, Lord, I just pray that you take the words that have been said, and God, the truth from your word, and that you would just use it in our lives some way, somehow, Father. Thank you for the opportunity to preach your word tonight. Of in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. What are you cats about, girl?